Bob Woodruff. And I'm Elizabeth Vargas. Tonight, the Supreme Court upholds Oregon's doctor-assisted suicide law. The high court says it's up to the state, and more states could follow. Spy suits, two major civil rights groups sued to shut down the Bush administration's secret eavesdropping program. After Katrina, a new storm. The mayor who said God intended his city to be black. We'll take a closer look at race in New Orleans. Drugs and gender, the new evidence that common medications have very different effects on men and women. And lost and found, the mystery of a classic Corvette stolen in 1969 is solved. 37 years later, the owner gets it back. From ABC News, this is World News Tonight with Bob Woodruff and Elizabeth Vargas. Good evening. We begin with a Supreme Court ruling that will affect families in some of the most private moments. Today, the High Court upheld Oregon's doctor-assisted suicide law, rejecting a challenge from the Bush administration. There is disappointment in the White House tonight, but the fight is not over. Americans are sharply divided over whether doctors should be allowed to help end lives. A recent survey found 46% in favor of physician-assisted suicide, 45% opposed. ABC's Lisa Stark joins us now from the Supreme Court with today's developments. Lisa? Well, Elizabeth, this case was not about the merits of physician-assisted suicide, but about the power of the federal government over the states. The fight began back in 2001, when then-Attorney General John Ashcroft decided that under federal drug laws, physician-assisted suicide was illegal. For terminally ill patients in Oregon, the ruling means they have a say in the decision to end their life. It's a peaceful feeling. Uh, it helps put me at ease knowing that it is going to be there. For doctors and pharmacists in the state, it means they are no longer under federal threat if they prescribe a lethal dose of drugs. I certainly hope this is the, the, essentially the last word on this, that we can continue to practice medicine in Oregon as we do, um, that others will be able to learn from this. In its ruling, the court found former Attorney General Ashcroft had overstepped his authority. Justice Anthony Kennedy wrote for the majority that the Attorney General had tried to make a radical shift of power from the states to the federal government when it comes to local medical practices. The court's two most conservative members, Scalia and Thomas, disagreed, as did Chief Justice John Roberts in his first dissent. Justice Scalia wrote that the federal government's use of the law to prevent assisted suicide is unquestionably permissible. The court decision throws this explosive issue back in the hands of the states. For the last couple of years, because of the Supreme Court case, there's been a little bit of a hesitation on some of the states' parts, but I think this will clearly open the door. 44 states currently prohibit physician-assisted suicide, but some, including California, are considering changing their laws. I believe that it is going to only help uh, our momentum in terms of getting our bill through the process into the governor's desk. Opponents of physician-assisted suicide say today's decision does not put the issue to rest. I don't think this is the end of these cases on the right to die or assisted suicide. I think this is just the beginning of decades of litigation. Now, in 1997, the Supreme Court ruled that there is no constitutional right to assisted suicide, again, throwing the issue back to the states. Congress has twice tried to ban the practice, and some believe this will again end up on Capitol Hill. Congress Elizabeth? will try again. All right, Lisa Stark, thanks so much. Now to the administration's legal battle over its secret domestic spying program. The ACLU and the Center for Constitutional Rights filed lawsuits today to stop the National Security Agency from spying on people without warrants. President Bush says the program has uncovered potential terrorists, but the lawsuits claim it's doing more harm than good. ABC's Pierre Thomas reports now from the Justice Department. Attorneys for detainees held at Guantanamo Bay believe their telephone conversations and emails with clients have been illegally tapped by the secret NSA spy program. I'm really outraged having to go back and think about the fact that conversations you had with your clients that you thought were absolutely confidential, that were privileged, that those were probably, you know, are now the property of the U.S. government. In today's lawsuits, those attorneys along with authors, scholars, and Muslim support groups claim unauthorized government eavesdropping will limit their ability to do their jobs. 
if you feel as though you're being wiretapped or uh, placed under surveillance, it would obviously place a chilling effect on your First Amendment right to free speech. Investigative journalist James Bamford is concerned his sources on international terrorism may now be unwilling to talk. They will be very inhibited uh, from communicating with me from now on, knowing that I may be uh, uh, subject to NSA eavesdropping. Um, that greatly affects uh, the way I, I write, uh, the quality of my writing, uh, the, the course of my employment and so forth. But will these lawsuits hold up in court? Some legal scholars believe that potential victims will have to prove they were spied on, something the government is not likely to confirm. It's really questionable whether the courts are going to allow a major lawsuit to go forward based on vague and speculative allegations like that. Even those filing the lawsuits admit they have no hard evidence they were spied on and want the government to provide the proof. We want confirmation that we were wiretapped or else confirmation that we weren't. Today the Bush administration called these lawsuits baseless. I think the, the frivolous lawsuits do nothing to help enhance civil liberties or protect the American people. Even if these lawsuits fail, expect critics of the NSA spy program to try other tactics to hold the government accountable. Elizabeth? All right, Pierre Thomas at the Justice Department. Thanks so much, Bob. Thank you, Elizabeth. There's new information tonight about the U.S. airstrike in Pakistan last week that killed 18 people and set off some protests in that country. U.S. officials still do not know if Osama bin Laden's deputy, Ayman al-Zawahiri, was among them. But ABC News has learned that three of the dead were Egyptians, the same nationality as Zawahiri. ABC's David Wright is in Pakistan. Pakistani authorities today confirmed that as many as 12 foreign extremists were due to attend a holiday dinner at one of the homes destroyed in Friday's airstrike, and that at least four of the dead were foreign fighters. It's the first official confirmation by Pakistan that the U.S. attack was based on solid intelligence. Local residents are outraged by the attack. Pakistan's government failed to protect its citizens from the U.S., said this man. Don't enter like this, okay? We've got to but the truth is more complicated. Pakistan's government actually works with the U.S. to fight al-Qaeda. I would note that our cooperation with Pakistan in this part of the world along the Afghan border is very close. Uh, it's continuing. The region where the attack took place is a wild frontier of sorts. Pakistan's army is not welcome there, and border guards often don't even bother to check IDs. The U.S. has been winning hearts and minds in Pakistan through earthquake relief. Today, former President Bush, here to see the aid effort firsthand, dismissed the suggestion that the U.S. attack has in any way undermined that goodwill. I don't think so. No. This is too big, too important. There'll be some bumps in the road along the way, but... But uh, we're America. We're going to reach out and continue to help people, and that's going to resonate in the long run. At least government officials here and in Washington hope so. David Wright, ABC News, Islamabad. ABC News has learned about a dangerous new threat to U.S. forces in Iraq. Military investigators now believe that insurgents used a shoulder-fired missile to shoot down a U.S. helicopter yesterday, killing the two pilots. The Pentagon says this could be the first time insurgents have downed a U.S. aircraft with a missile. Here's our national security correspondent, Jonathan Carl. Pentagon officials tell ABC News they believe the Apache helicopter was shot down by a Russian-made surface-to-air missile called an SA-7. That's a troubling new development because there are hundreds, by some estimates, thousands of SA-7 missiles unaccounted for in Iraq. The weapons had been part of Saddam Hussein's arsenal, much of which was looted after the invasion. But until now, insurgents had never destroyed an American aircraft with one. It could be just a lucky shot. Or it could be that they have invested in a training program, they now have some qualified operators, and that'll be more of a threat than it has been in the past. That remains to be seen. Apache helicopters are designed to be able to evade missiles like this. The military is investigating why this one did not. The Army is also looking into another potential threat to American helicopters, what one Army general calls aerial IEDs, bombs that would shoot into the air and detonate when a helicopter passes by. Insurgents are believed to be making these devices from remnants of Saddam Hussein's anti-aircraft weapons. An aerial ID would be an indication, again, of the enemy's innovation and creativity. Clearly, they recognize that the publicity that surrounds a destroyed or damaged aircraft is 
significantly greater than the publicity that surrounds a destroyed or damaged vehicle. The military has recently increased helicopter traffic in Iraq in an effort to avoid roadside bombs. But, Bob, by reducing one threat, they may be increasing another. All right, ABC's Jonathan Carl at the Pentagon tonight. Thank you. Staying in Iraq, the group that kidnapped American journalist Jill Carroll is threatening to kill her. Al Jazeera carried video of the reporter today along with an ultimatum from her abductors. They are demanding that the U.S. free Iraqi women prisoners within 72 hours. Carol works for the Christian Science Monitor. She was kidnapped last month. And the price of oil hit a three-month high today, $66.31. That's up $2.39 today, a spike of nearly 4%. Analysts blamed concerns about Iran's nuclear ambitions and an attack on a Nigerian oil platform. If prices stay high, drivers can expect to pay more at the pump by Monday. And when this live Western edition of World News Tonight continues, the raging debate about race in New Orleans. The mayor says God wants it to be a chocolate city. We'll take a closer look. The new research about drugs and gender, how some popular medications affect men and women so differently. And a story about love lost and found. A man and his special car, their improbable reunion today after 37 years. This is World News Tonight. Brought to you by T.D. Waterhouse. Excuse me, you're still with your old brokerage firm? I know, I know, but I like being able to talk to somebody when I have a question. Look, I don't want to be out there in cyberspace all by myself. <laughs> we moved our money to a T.D. Waterhouse online account. Their people really make us feel connected. T.D. Waterhouse has investment consultants you can talk to when you have a question. So you're not out there all on your own. You can do this. Switch to TD Waterhouse, the alternative to higher priced brokers. Right now at Red Lobster, choose your two favorites from five of our most irresistible jumbo shrimp dishes, like jumbo scampi, hand breaded crunch fried, or our new decadent lobster and crab stuffed shrimp. That's jumbo shrimp only at Red Lobster. Doing your own taxes. Only the most brilliant financial minds had the confidence to attempt it until TurboTax. Now the math impaired can do it. The disorganized, the overworked, the worry warts, even the procrastinators. TurboTax gives millions of Americans the confidence to do their own taxes. It's easy, and its calculations are guaranteed accurate. TurboTax, taxes made easy, taxes done right. If you're concerned about catching a cold or the flu this season, here's an idea. Move to a deserted island and avoid other people for six months. <laughs> or just drink a glass of Florida orange juice every day. Give your immune system more of the vitamins and minerals it needs. Florida orange juice, healthy, pure and simple. Showing folks how a packet of Hidden Valley Ranch changes regular chops into ranch chops. It's got pizzazz. And changes regular bread into ranch bread. It's better than bread. <laughs> Hidden Valley Ranch. This changes everything. Who would ever think that the waste we generate would generate support for local events? The same people who lead the way in recycling nationwide and who conduct educational programs for our children. We're Waste Management. Working with local leaders, we're developing smart, earth-friendly landfill properties that serve the community in unexpected ways. From everyday collection to environmental protection. Think green. Think waste management. to take a closer look tonight at race, politics, and Hurricane Katrina. The mayor of New Orleans has set off a storm of controversy with comments that have outraged both blacks and whites. Ray Nagin, speaking at a Martin Luther King Day celebration, said Hurricane Katrina was a sign that God is angry at blacks. And he promised New Orleans would be a, quote, chocolate city again, end quote. ABC's Mike Von Fremd is in New Orleans with the story. Today, Mayor Ray Nagin was back on the job meeting with officials and begging for forgiveness. I did offend some people, and for that, I am, I am sorry, I apologize. 
His remarks yesterday, in which he expressed his vision for the racial makeup of New Orleans, shocked even his strongest supporters. This city will be chocolate at the end of the day. This city will be a majority African-American city. It's the way God wants it to be. The mayor later redefined his definition of chocolate. How do you make chocolate? You take dark chocolate, you mix it with white milk, and it becomes a, a delicious drink. That's the chocolate I'm talking about. New Orleans is desperate to convince evacuees to come back to live and work here. The three big universities here started classes again today. But many students now wonder if they are still welcome. I plan on staying here after I graduated, and that makes me feel like I'm not wanted anymore. Political leaders say the mayor's remarks could not have come at a worse time. New Orleans is asking the federal government for billions of dollars to help rebuild. If people start to think that one group is not wanted in our city, then they're not going to want to help us. And right now, we can't afford to reject help from anyone. Two months ago, he raised eyebrows when he complained about the number of Hispanics coming to New Orleans for jobs. How do I make sure that New Orleans is not overrun by Mexican workers? And yesterday, many here were dumbfounded when he equated natural disaster with retribution. Surely God is mad at America. He's sending hurricane after hurricane after hurricane. And it's destroying and putting stress on this country. I think he could have kept them comments to himself. Ray Nagan is getting a hard lesson in crisis management and big city politics. Mike Vaughn for MDBC News, New Orleans. Well, as Mike made clear, the mayor's remarks are generating quite a bit of controversy. Judge them for yourself. We have Mayor Nagan's unedited speech in the Broadcast Plus section of our website, where you can also let us know whether you think he went too far. You'll find that and much more at wnt.abcnews.com, where you can find us always online. And when we come back, new evidence of the enormous differences between men and women when it comes to many common medicines. What's that? This? Smart Start Healthy Heart. Healthy Heart? Yeah. It contains ingredients that may help lower both blood pressure and cholesterol as part of a healthy lifestyle. Cool. It's a cereal that helps take care of my heart. You see, I want to be around forever. Great. <laughs> the only one with ingredients that may help lower both. Kellogg's Smart Start Healthy Heart. Do more. All of us have internal plumbing. But for some of us, with frequent bladder urges, our pipes just don't work as well as they should. Sometimes you worry you could spring an embarrassing leak. So why deal with it on your own when there's something more you can do? Treat it once daily with Vesicare. Vesicare can reduce urges and may even help relieve bladder leakage. If you have certain types of stomach, urinary, or glaucoma problems, do not take Vesicare. While taking Vesicare, if you experience a serious allergic reaction, severe abdominal pain, or become constipated for three or more days, tell your doctor right away. Common side effects are dry mouth, constipation, blurred vision, and indigestion. So ask your doctor today if Vesicare is right for you. Fewer urges and leaks with Vesicare. Save $25 by calling now or visiting Vesicare.com for your free kit. Marie Callender was like a lot of grandmas, and nobody has ever indulged us like grandma. A cookie before dinner, the extra scoop, even a fort in the living room was just fine. And Marie Callender's also believes in a little indulgence, so we never cut corners. Like our chicken pot pie, it has a flaky crust made from scratch that's filled, filled with tender chicken and crisp vegetables. Marie Callender's chicken pot pies. Sit down, eat, enjoy. I am dedicated, and I'm a diabetic. And that's how I feel when I test with my meter, the AccuCheck Aviva. Designed to test right the first time to avoid painful resticking, the new AccuCheck Aviva. Want to know a secret? For some adults, today's lunch is A3. That's why there's delicious Ensure. Complete balanced nutrition, vitamins, minerals, food energy. If you don't eat right, eat smart. Drink Ensure. Tomorrow, parents.
Listen up. The new social craze for kids you need to know about. It's everyone's like center of like life. <laughs> they think it's harmless fun, but guess what? It's preventing kids from getting into college and even getting a job. Find out why on World News Tonight. We have a follow-up to our story about the California school district that had been teaching an alternative to evolution, intelligent design. The theory that life is so complex, a supernatural power must have created it. Today, school officials in Lebec, north of Los Angeles, agreed to cancel the course, settling a lawsuit filed by parents. It looks like Gerald Ford will be spending at least a couple more days in the hospital. The 92-year-old former president is being treated for pneumonia at the Eisenhower Medical Center near his home in Rancho Mirage, California. Doctors say he is doing well. Millions of Americans take an aspirin each day for their health, but a report in the Journal of the American Medical Association tonight says aspirin can affect men and women differently. In fact, many common medications have very different results depending on your gender. Here's ABC's John McKenzie. Compiling results from several large studies on healthy Americans, researchers tonight say that aspirin prevents strokes in women and prevents heart attacks in men. Why this difference? They're not certain. There are profound differences in medications across sexes. Uh, some of them we're aware of, some of them we're becoming aware of, and many of them we don't even know. A government review of almost 200 new drug applications found that 20% of drugs were processed differently in a woman's body than a man's. Researchers say some drugs act differently in women for many reasons, including hormones and more active enzymes that break down drugs more quickly. These differences can influence the effects of a wide variety of medications. Blood thinners, the widely used drug Coumadin, may have a much more powerful effect in women also taking oral contraceptives or in the middle of their menstrual period when estrogen levels are at their highest. So dosages may have to be reduced. Pain medications, injuries in women often trigger much more inflammation than in men. So women may require more of an anti-inflammatory drug such as ibuprofen. Sedatives, the popular medication Valium, is broken down much more quickly in women, suggesting they may require higher or more frequent doses. Asthma drugs, the steroid prednisolone, is also processed more quickly in women because of higher levels of progesterone just before menstruation. I think it's important to know how a drug will act depending on whether the patient is a male or female. Often the results may surprise us. Often leaving many women with too much or too little of a medicine they need. John McKenzie, ABC News, New York. In Alaska, the Augustine volcano erupted again today, hurling ash more than eight miles into the sky. Nearby residents with respiratory problems were urged to stay indoors. It is the ninth eruption since Augustine rumbled to life on an uninhabited island last week. And when our Western edition of World News Tonight continues, a blast from the past. A man and his muscle car reunited nearly four decades later. Let's say you have a patient, adult male, 45, he's generally healthy, but his cholesterol is elevated. He's eating healthy, exercising, but his cholesterol is still up. Choices. Prescribe a cholesterol-lowering medicine like a statin. Good choice. Other options? How about prescribing Zetia? It works differently. Statins work mainly with the liver. Zetia works in the digestive tract, as do some other medicines. But Zetia is unique in the way it helps block the absorption of cholesterol that comes from food. So it complements what he's already doing. Yep, and Zetia, along with a healthy diet, lowered bad cholesterol by as much as 30 points. That's 18%. Zetia may not be right for people who have ever had liver problems, are nursing or pregnant, or may become pregnant. A doctor will decide if Zetia is right for them. Unexplained muscle pain or weakness could be a sign of a rare but serious side effect and should be reported to a doctor right away. Common side effects include tiredness and stomach pain. Let's break for lunch. Eat healthy. Don't forget to exercise. Ask your doctor if Zetia is right for you. Zetia, it's a different way to help fight cholesterol. A sore throat is bad enough. A cough can blast it with painful shock waves. Now there's one lozenge, Sepacol Sore Throat Plus Cough. The only lozenge with pain-numbing anesthetic plus cough suppressant. New Sepacol Sore Throat Plus Cough. Hello? It's your wake-up call. Wake-up call? That's right. You have gained 10 pounds, at least. Not so peppy anymore, huh? What'll I do? Want to feel like you did 10 pounds ago? Try the Post-T2 Lose 10 Plan. 
Cut your calories, exercise, and replace two meals a day with these heart-healthy Post cereals. Hello? Wake up call. Honey, it's for you. You'll feel like you did 10 pounds ago. My customers come to me because I care. I take more time to know not just their name, not just that they're getting the medication, but I try to find out, are you okay? Is everything going on? Can I help you with something? It's more than just medicine being a pharmacist. I work the late night shift, and I get probably more calls from people who, in the middle of the night, can't get to the hospital, can't call their doctor, and to know they have someone there to be of assistance to them and answer their questions is awesome. My name is Yoshima Thomas, and I'm a CVS pharmacist. When you're constipated, a stimulant laxative like X-Lax can cause cramps. And cramps can give you a bad day. Phillips Caplets don't have harsh stimulants, so you get gentle relief without cramps. Relief feels better with Phillips Caplets. Tonight at 9, 8 central. Our focus is on getting our sailors home safe. That could mean war. On the news, they said there might be a nuclear bomb. An all-new Commander-in-Chief. Tonight, 9, 8 central. Followed by an all-new Boston Legal, only on ABC. Finally tonight, a happy ending. It's a story we noticed in the morning papers. It was 37 years ago that a young man here in New York City lost one of the loves of his life. Stolen, actually. A sleek 1968 Corvette. He moved on, and so apparently did his car. Today, after so many roads traveled, an improbable reunion. ABC's Neil Karlinski explains. When the moment came... <laughs> Oh, geez. Alan Poster could hardly believe it. The last time he drove this 68 Corvette, he was a 26-year-old guitar salesman, and the car was blue, not silver. Well, I remember driving it through the, the tunnel in Manhattan, and, and some guy wanted to race me. And I knew he was, he was dirt. <laughs> it was January 22, 1969, and the car was the hottest thing on the road. Poster had only owned it two and a half months when it was stolen from this parking garage in New York. One of nearly 80,000 stolen cars in New York City just that year. Fast forward nearly 37 years to last month in Los Angeles. During a routine customs check, agents found the Corvette inside this cargo container bound for Sweden. The vehicle identification number revealed the car was stolen in New York, but no details. That's when New York police detectives Cliff Beter and William Heiser began scouring the department's records and digging into the coldest stolen car case of their careers. Uh, we went through about 5,000 records during the course of four days here to locate this report. The 1969 police report led them to Poster. When detectives called, he didn't believe it was actually the NYPD. He was pretty surprised. I think he thought it was a joke at first. So where has the car been for the last three and a half decades? No one really seems to know. It was apparently never insured, never registered, or the very same vehicle identification number would have given it away as stolen. Today, the car that cost $6,000 is a classic. Similar models are auctioned on websites for $50,000, $60,000, even $100,000. Poster says his is not for sale. I plan to restore it and uh, keep it. And give it to another anxious young driver, his teenage daughter. Neil Karlinski, ABC News, Carson, California. Okay, she's going to be the coolest girl at high school. <laughs> Great persu persuasive people, daughters. And the cops put that much time in this to find this man's car. It's a very important Remarkable. hunt. That's World News Tonight for this Tuesday. I'm Elizabeth Vargas. And I'm Bob Woodruff for all of us here at ABC News. Have a good evening. Good night. An unforgettable actor. By the way, Your Honor, I'm, uh, I'm dying. I object. You object. An unforgettable role. Michael J. Fox returns for an all-new Boston Legal. Tonight, 10-9 Central, following a new commander in... See it. Shoot it. Send it. When you capture breaking news on your camera or cell phone, email it to eyewitnessnews at video at myabc7.com. Dial-up is so last year. Connect to your world faster with AT&T Yahoo high-speed internet. Just $14.99 a month when you order online. Introducing the new AT&T. Your world delivered. Change, and the world changes with you. Kaiser Permanente.
thrive. It's a new year. Lose the weight. Connect to your world faster with AT&T Yahoo high-speed internet. Just $14.99 a month when you order online. Introducing the new AT&T. Your world delivered.